Good morning, Church of the Living God. Brethren, how are you today? I hope you are doing good. <laughs> That's my wife in the background. <laughs> are you doing a video? Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, I don't know if, bro if you could hear that, brethren. Yes, that is uh, my wife, your sister Susan. <laughs> Uh, anyway, brethren, yesterday, my wife and I were out uh, running some errands. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, yesterday, he had given us such a day. Uh, a lot of blessings, a lot of re rebuke and correction, a lot of chastisement, too. Yesterday was a great day, a good day. Yesterday, as we were at the Menards, uh, as we were checking out, you know, getting our stuff that we needed, more supplies, that kind of stuff. Um, we were talking to the gal at the, you know, the, the register thing, you know. And very cordial, very friendly, lively. And um, as we were leaving, I, like I like to do, I took out of my pocket one of our tracks that we used. And it's like, can I give you the card of my employer? <laughs> I, I like to preface, I like to say it as that. You know, and they look at this card, it's like, Jesus. <laughs> you know, I really, I, I like doing that. But this cashier lady, uh, lady, who was very jovial, very sweet and daring and whatnot, her countenance, her visage changed just like that. From smiling to, oh, you can't hand those out here. Uh, and all it was was a track that's shaped like a business card, okay? But it was it was really striking, and even my wife was like, "Wow, <laughs> you know, just that quickly." They went from day to night. The minute I handed her a gospel track, hence the times that we live times that we live. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Acts chapter 5. Please do not sit there passively. I am not here to entertain you or anything of such matters. Let's go through the scriptures together. Follow me along, please. I'm going to speak to you as though you are following me along, okay? So, you got it? Okay. Acts chapter 5. Let us begin at verse 29 onto the close of the chapter. <gasps> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, we got some scriptures we're going to go through today. We got some scriptures we're going to go through today. Follow me along. Beginning at verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. So if God tells you to do something, and man tells you to do contrary wise to what God said, what are you going to choose? See, there are those out there right away. Um, this is a video, hopefully, that will come in, be coming in the near future. Uh, uh, hopefully, the Lord will allow me to destroy an article done by some guy who said uh, taking the steel of the Jesuit Punyard is the Christian thing to do. And indeed it is the Christian thing to do. But of the church of the living God? No, no, no. But no wabbits. Sorry, brother. Not too many wabbits in this one, okay? <laughs> but there are those out there who will try to twist the scriptures to say that Jesus would have you to submit yourself to tyranny, to submit yourself to government that is totally opposite of the scriptures in every way shape and form 
okay? So, we are to be to obey God rather than men. Okay? The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And of course, with that, hold your place there. This is a little on the impromptu side. Got my notes, but uh, might as well uh, go to Isaiah verses uh, Isaiah chapter nine, verses six, on to verse seven. Read that verse again. Verse thirty-one. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a capital P, Prince, and a Savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 on to verse 7. For unto us a child is born. Salvation is of the Jews, not of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Note the capitals here. Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. Jesus Christ is God the Father. The Prince of Peace of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end in the kingdom of heaven the rule and reign of our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father for a thousand years at Jerusalem okay upon the throne of David as king and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment oh, Jesus Christ is a judge yeah yeah, the Lord loveth judgment. Yes. And with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Go back to Acts chapter 5 again. Okay? Wanted to show that. And we, uh, verse 32, picking up at, and we are his witnesses of these things, as so is the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? Whom God hath given to them that obey Him. That obey Him. You know, you have to come to the Lord on His terms. I've, I'm, I'm driving this home. I don't care how sick you are of hearing it. You're going to hear it. Okay? You need to come to the Lord on His terms conditions not your own his conditions are again brokenness contrition and brokenness and contrition will lead on to the fear of the Lord and the fear of the Lord will bring you to call upon his name and may he save you okay so we are saved by his grace through our faith. Okay? Grace is what He does. Our faith is what we do after He gives unto us His grace. See? Yes, faith is an integral part of salvation. But to arrive at that faith, the true faith, requires brokenness and contrition of the Lord. And you will call upon His name. You have to come to him on his terms, not your own. If you go any other way, you're a thief and a robber. Okay? Let's continue. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. You know, in Acts chapter 2, it says prick. Here it says cut. In Acts chapter 7, it also says cut. Okay? That they were cut to the heart. You prick something, a little blood comes out. 
you cut, it's like Niagara Falls. Okay? There's a difference between a pricking and a cutting. Okay? When they heard that, they were cut to the heart. And what happened when they, as with Stephen, what happens when they were cut to the heart? And took counsel to slay them. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law. Gamaliel, the one who trained Saul, who later became Paul. If this is a different Gamaliel, I do not know. It, it seems most likely that this is the Gamaliel that taught Saul later to become Paul our apostle. Okay? Okay? Notice the new creature. Notice the new creature, by the way, from Saul onto Paul, a new creature. Had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. Had in reputation among all the people. So think about that. That gives us to think what? That not only those who were saved, but also those who were not, maybe? Hmm? Of all the people. Had a reputation. Let's look at his counsel that he gives. And said unto them, Ye men of Israel, okay, no Gentiles were involved in any of this until after the stoning of Stephen. The stoning of Stephen is the official rejection of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, by his own people, the Jew. And it has been uh, brought on to us to make them jealous. Okay? It's not that we have it's not that we have replaced the Jew, God forbid. No. We have been grafted into their tree. That's what Romans chapter eleven is. I have a video um, here, I, I, so I don't forget, uh, called Replacement Theology, Parts 1 and 2. Uh, I've, I'll link it in the uh, description box for you to see. Okay? But let's continue. And he said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days, rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves who, were, who was slain. And all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. So it was a work of men. A guy who was saying popular things to a select few or whatever, all grouped around him. And this movement started, but then it came to naught, because why? It was a man. Okay? Just like a lot of what these devils here on YouTube and other platforms do in attacking the brethren. Okay? Verse 37. And after this man rose up Judas of Galilee. Here is the official scriptural mention of of the Maccabean revolt. Here it is, okay? The Maccabean revolt. Okay? This is a mention to it. Okay? This is the mention to it. After this rose up Judas of Galilee, Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed, came to naught. Okay? Catholics um, believe that the book of Maccabees is inspired scripture. The Apocrypha is not inspired scripture. It is from the Apocrypha, the hidden wisdom, hidden, okay, um, where Catholic doctrine comes from, okay? That's where it comes from, okay? So, just so you know, just so you know. But yes, this is referencing the Maccabean Revolt. Okay. And what happens here? He said, Even as many as obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say unto you, Refrain from these men, 
Hold on. Hold on before you jump on them. Hold on before you applaud them. Take a step back, okay? And let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. It will come to naught. If it be of men or of God, it will come to naught. And the works of men are quite obvious, especially with a lot of my friends here on YouTube who just love to make me the apple of their eye. You pathetic creature, you. But, but, their work is work of men because they are serving their father, the devil. Okay? But what he is saying here is like, okay, hold on. Let him alone. Let's hold back. Let's see. Let's see if this work be of men or if it be of God. Okay? Like I tell you all the time, sooner or later, sooner or later, the false and the coagitor will make themselves known. And when you look back at these things, you will always see little pieces, little smidgens, little pieces. I learn, and this is what I do, the one thing that I attribute to my dear, dear friend from England. <laughs> Excuse me. I, I, I get really, uh, really get a lot of mucus in, you know, when I think about my dear friend from England. But this is one lesson that my dear, dear friend from England, the polite, cordial man that he is, uh, <laughs> got the emails to prove that. <laughs> um, this is the lesson that I learned from him. This is a lesson that I learned from him. Okay? That over time, they will reveal themselves. They always do. And then when you look back after they had been made manifest that they were not all of us, you will see the Lord usually like, hey, do you, do you remember that? Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Yeah. See, sometimes brethren, Okay? Sometimes it's a good idea to sit back and let them shoot themselves in the foot. Okay? Sometimes it's a good thing to sit back and let God be God, which the Christians have trivialized, but to let God be God, okay? And let Him do what He will do. And if, it is, and if the work be of men, it will come to naught. And if it is of God, whether it's in increments of little or many or much, God giveth the increase. Okay? So, let's continue now. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Now this isn't the victim martyr mentality where um, they go out purposely just to suffer to prove unto others, see how righteous we are. No, no, this is a consequence, if you will, of them standing up for the Lord in verse 29 where we began. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. And it's a worthy thing to suffer for his name. When you do it his way, see, not according to your own dictate. Okay? And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. They don't want you to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Like I said, that, that gal from the, uh, the Menards yesterday, so nice, so sweet, so cordial, friendly, talkative, conversive. Can I give you the, the card of my employer that has, you know, that's a gospel tract that says, 
uh, call his name Jesus on it. Countenance, countenance and visage, zoom, from night, from day to night, like that. Oh, we, you can't handle us out here. Well, guess what there, there lady? Uh, my wife and I were putting them in many things in your store the whole time we were there. <laughs> And then I, I, I'm a little, on, a, a little on the defiant side, as I tend to be sometimes. As we were like leaving, the very track that I offered the lady, their little customer service area, slap, <laughs> slapped it right down on the counter there. It's like, okay, we're out of here. We don't plan on returning there ever anytime soon. Okay? But see, if the counsel be of men, it will come to naught. If it be of God, God gives it the increase. And see, you lost people right now are going to be made to believe that what is coming to pass is of a little g God. Why is that? Why is that? Well, let's answer that very simply. Go to 2 Thessalonians. What verses? What verses are we going to in 2 Thessalonians, brethren? Chapter 2, yes. What verses? Verses 11, uh, verses 10, on to, uh, no, verses 9 on to verse 12. In 2 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 2. Verses 9 on to verse 12. Why is that? Why would a sweet gal, sweet woman, very conversive, very friendly, both to my wife and to myself. Why would she go from day to night at the mention of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, in a simple, simple little gospel tract? Why? Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. These people want anything but Jesus Christ. They want the Jesus that the Christian preaches. A Jesus that doesn't judge, that loves everybody, that's going to save everybody whether or not they come to him on his terms or not, okay, who's okay with your sin, who's kind of a passive sissy little pushover. That's the Jesus that the world wants. That's that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? That's what they want. But the Jesus, our Jesus, our Father, our God of the Scriptures, not the one of the Bibles, but of the scriptures. Hey, hey, they don't want anything to do with him. Do they? Do you? Oh, no, you don't. Because remember, <laughs> God loves you. God loves you. <laughs> Let's continue. And for this cause, because they receive not the love of the truth, God shall send them strong delusion. He'll give you what you want. Yeah. Up to dosage there, buddy. You know, keep telling yourself God knows your heart and that you're saved by what your belief. And Go ahead. Go ahead. Or you're saved by uh, a system of works doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever. Go ahead. Go ahead. You want to believe that? Not believe the truth? God will send you strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned, not condemned, like the Bibles say. There's a big difference between damnation and condemnation. Very big. Very, very big difference. Okay? that they all might be damned who believe not the truth right there don't look at me right there verse 12 we're looking at that but have pleasure in unrighteousness in the book of Romans like uh, it says also that they have pleasure in those who do the same thing I just bradized that 
had pleasure in those who do the same thing. Because they receive not the love of the truth. Go now to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 18. This is the telling of Ahab and all his false prophets, which is also echoed in 1 Kings chapter uh, 22. But we want 2 Chronicles chapter 18 if I can get there. Okay. <laughs> 2 Chronicles chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 22. Now this is talking about King Ahab. Ahab. You know, Ahab, whose wife was Jezebel. Okay? Yeah. Outstanding people. Okay? Ahab, the little wimp who his wife, Jezebel, manipulated and played him like a marionette. Okay? Uh, Jezebel, by the way, is a perfect example and type of the Roman Catholic Church. You know, Satan's church and his army, the Jesuit order. Okay? And also an ungodly woman. Very. very uh, you ladies and you women, if you have any of a trace in Jezebel in you, <laughs> you need to talk to someone about that. Okay. Second Chronicles chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 22. Let's look at an example of what we've been talking about thus far. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. That was problem number one. When you are joined in affinity, likeness, fellowship, whatever, with someone who isn't, that's dangerous. Especially when those who you have affinity try to use the Jesuit tactic of isolation. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But that was his number one problem. Okay. Let's continue. And after certain years he went down to Ahab to Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance. Hey, buddy, come on down. Look at all what I'm doing for you, my friend. Yeah, my dear friend. Look at all that I'm doing for you. Yeah. Yeah, and then go and rub it in your face. Yeah. <laughs> and for the people that he had with him, and persuaded him to go with him to Ramoth Gilead. Hey, look at all this. See, look at what I'm doing for you. See what I've done. So come on. Since, I, since I've done all this for you, you owe me. <laughs> if I'm wrong, the Lord will show me. I hope he does. I hope I am. But until then, cut off. And that's good. So, let's continue. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat, who did make his blunders, who um, who was a little too soft-hearted sometimes for his own good. Jehoshaphat was a little naive, high, for his own good. Yeah. To this day, 13 years, saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God. To this day, I still... I still tend to be a little on the naive side. And, oh boy, that's cost me. Let's continue. And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people. We will be with thee in the war. 
And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. And Ahab was like, Okay, fine, let's, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together of prophets four hundred men. And remember in uh, Matthew chapter 16, where our Lord, do I have any notes here? No, I don't. Where our Lord says to Pope Peter, <laughs> uh, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men, things of the flesh, like all Catholics are about the flesh. Aren't you? Yeah. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together of prophets 400 men and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up! For God will deliver it into the, hand, into the king's hand. Remember what we looked at, at in 2 Thessalonians about how they received not the love of the truth? Okay, and that God will send them a strong delusion. Outside the door, witnessing, going to wherever. Uh, they have not received the love of the truth. So God will send them strong delusion. Okay? If this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it is of God, God will give the increase. See, remember people, Satan is a counterfeit. Satan is a copycat. Okay? Satan is a replacement theology-ist. Okay? He wants the praise that is rightly belonging unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Satan wants it. And all of you who bow your knee, and you're a Christian, right? And you bow your knee to this, uh, you're worshiping the devil. You're worshiping the devil. Verse 6. Note Jehoshaphat, who had some problems with naivety. Hi. But notice what Jehoshaphat says here. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? Jehoshaphat had the presence of mind. It's like, wait a second. 400 people so readily and quick to give King Ahab his, Yeah, go, go. God bless you. God wills it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, he had the presence of mind to be like, wait a second. Wait a second. Especially probably also, I, I would think, taking into the account that Ahab put on all this glamour and glitz for him coming down and sacrificed all this stuff. See, see, see how much I love you up there, brother. See how much I've done for you. See how much I love you. Because I've done this, you owe me. Right? But yet, Jehoshaphat. Wait a minute. Wait. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Wait. Let's continue. Then the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat. <laughs> I like this. There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But hold now, hold on. One man against 400. One man against 400. Brethren, you and I are the church of the living God or the church of God. Okay? Either or. We're that small. And the falling away, which is the Lord showing us those who are not of us and making them manifest that they were not all of us. Okay? That is the falling away. Yes, a saved, born again, converted uh, of the church of the living God. Yes, someone who is saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God can get royally messed up. Yes, they can. Again, First and Second Corinthians talks about that in detail. Sure does. Sure does. 
okay? But the falling away is getting the fat off of the bone, okay? The hearts are as fat as grease, okay? Their hearts are as fat as grease. Well, they got big hearts, and God knows their hearts. Let's reread that. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him. For he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. Ah. See, have you ever run into someone that's like, Well, you're a Christian. You're supposed to tell me all these good things about how God loves you. No, I'm not a Christian. I'm of the church of the living God. I'm telling you, you need to repent of your self-righteousness. You need to come to the Lord broken and contrite. And in fear, call upon the name of the Lord. Because if you don't, you're going to hell. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the church of the living God. We tell you what the Lord wants you to hear. Um, uh, does Excuse me. Tells you, we tell you what the Lord wants. Uh, what the Lord wants you to know what you need to hear okay sorry for messing up on that uh, we don't tell you what you want to hear we tell you what you need to hear okay we tell you of the church of the living God what you need to hear why because we have the Lord Jesus Christ God our Father and the Lord is that spirit within us we are sealed until the day of redemption the circumcision made without hands and he will lead you and guide you into all truth. And he, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, who is our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ in us, will speak to you through the scriptures that we, as the Church of the Living God, will present onto you. That's called prophesying for today. Okay? We tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. There's a difference. That's why Ahab hated this one man but preferred over uh, preferred 400 people who told him what he wanted to hear. The same is Micaiah, the son of Imla. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. It's okay. Hey, let's, let's give him a try. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imla." And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah sat either of them on their on his throne clothed in their robes and they sat in a void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria and all the prophets prophesied before them all the prophets except that one all of them it's like Yay, yay, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> You know, these charismatics, they're all prophesying. It's like, yes, go, God wants to bless you. God wants you to have a Mercedes Benz and a mansion. And yay, yay, oh yes, go, prosper. Go, prosper. God loves you. Yes, go. God wills it. And Zedekiah, the son of Kinana had made him horns of iron. Oh, yes. He was making a really big presentation, wasn't he? Really putting on a good shoe. Okay? Full of sound. It's a, yeah. Uh, a tale told by an idiot. Full of sound and fury. Signifying nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Shakespeare, by the way. should read some Shakespeare sometimes, brethren. Do you good. And Zedekiah the son of Kinana had made him, made him horns of iron and said, Thus saith the Lord, with these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. Can you, can you just picture him? You know, made these horns of iron and it's like doing all this dramatic showmanship. All these prophets prophesied before the king. Kings, excuse me. Yeah. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. The Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. God wills it! God wills it! <laughs> this work will be of men, will be of naught. Remember, 
Sin has been relegated to where? The skin suit, the flesh. The flesh is sinful and profitable for nothing. Okay? So, and Satan is all about the flesh. He, he's more concerned about the things that be of men, flesh, than the things that be of God. So if these things be of men, it will come to naught. Might not seem like it at first, but in the long run, it's going to come to naught. Whereas if it is of God, God giveth the increase. And also note Ahab, that one guy, Micaiah, just that one, out of all 400, he hated him because Micaiah never told him anything good. While all his prophets just itched his ears and told him everything he wanted to hear. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake, spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets did declare, did declare good to the king with one assent. Let their, thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. Now take this into consideration about verse 12. Micaiah apparently was known to be the, the odd one. Micaiah, obviously, uh, King Ahab hated him. And for good reason. Because Ahab was a wicked king. He's in hell. He was run by his wife Jezebel. Our instruction in righteousness, the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? And her army, the Jesuits. Okay? But he was obviously known to be the one to upset the apple cart. He was the one to be the monkey in the wrench. Okay? The pain in the buttocks. Yeah, he was the odd one. The thorn in the eye who always said the opposite of the status quo. Hey, brother, sister, church of the living God, you, t you tell me, you tell me, brother, sister, church of the living God, you tell me you hadn't felt like that one before, huh? All the fa false prophets saying yield to the system, yield to the system, yield to Satan, yield to Satan. And you and I are the church of the living God. Whoa, 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 repent. No, 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 no. God doesn't love you all. No, God loves those who are his. God's love is at Calvary. You reject that. Guess what? Guess what, buddy? God's love is at Calvary. The cross. Go there. But, but see cross is death. Something has to die. You have to die. Your self-righteousness. It's very simple. But for those who are of men, mere men, it can be quite impossible. There again, things that are impossible with man are possible with God. Amen. We have to give them that, brethren. Let's continue. And Micaiah said, remember what we looked at in Acts chapter 5, verse 29? As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. Are you going to be silent when the Lord tells you to say something? There's a difference between Taking a step back and letting God be God, okay? Okay, pal? There's a difference between stepping back and allowing God to reveal onto those select few what they really are. Again, if it be of men, it'll come to naught. Okay? But here, he's saying, Peter's basically saying the same thing as we ought to. As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. Especially when they're threatening, when the government is starting to look for people who are anti-vaxxers. <laughs> when are they going to do that to you two? Probably pretty soon. And it will bleed over to accounts like Grumble, uh, Odyssey, 
bit shoot. Bit shoot apparently is kind of a halfway kind of thingy that's kind of censoring but not totally. Okay. Yes, 1984 Orwellian things are coming to pass. Uh, you tell me that George Orwell's 1984 was written by him. No, that was written by a devil, if not the devil himself. Remember, the Jesuits must have confidence that their plans will succeed, or else they would never have made them know. It was known. It was a daring act, but then again, the Jesuits are daring men. From the Black Pope by M.F. Cusack. Okay? Love to have that as a PDF. Because apparently, the Two Babylons PDF, I, try, I put a new one on there. Uh, apparently, the PDF for the Two Babylons doesn't work regardless. So, anyway. Sorry, I know, a little rabbit there, brother. Let's continue. Now remember, Mecca Aya was known for upsetting the apple cart. They knew him to be the odd one. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Mecca Aya, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? Now remember the reputation that Mecca Aya obviously, apparently had? And he said, Go ye up and prosper. <laughs> and they and they shall be delivered into your hand. Oh, can you just see it, Micaiah? It's like, yeah. Go ahead and prosper, and the Lord deliver it to your hand. Remember, he was known for speaking truth, which these false prophets did. Note Ahab's answer. Note this. And the king said to him, How many times shall I adjure thee? that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Even Ahab knew that Micaiah, who was known for what? Yes, upsetting the apple cart for speaking the truth. Even Ahab called him on it because, hey, hey, Micaiah, it's like, hey, yeah, go ahead, buddy. Yeah, go, go, go. Go have fun storming the castle. <laughs> you think it'll work? It'll take a miracle. See, that's why you shouldn't watch Hollywood movies, because they cleave to you. Anyway. Verse 16. Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. 400 people. Go, prosper. One man, one voice. I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Meaning that Ahab was going to get killed. Let them return therefore every man to his house in peace. So, the Lord let it know, let Ahab know, it's like, hey, you're going to die. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me but evil? You're of the church of the living God. The witnessing to someone. You're, you're telling them the truth of what's going on, the truth of the scripture, the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they, they you'll see it. It's like that that's not what I've heard Jesus is. No, you've heard of what is known as that man of sin, the son of perdition. Who's that? Uh, inaccurately referred to the Antichrist. They're like, oh, okay. Okay. I've never heard that. Yeah, gee, I wonder why. Yeah. Yeah. You've run into this. I know you have. I know you have, Church of the Living God. You Christians out there that preach the uh, son of perdition, the Lord rebuke you. You Christians who are not of the Church of the Living God, preaching another gospel, another Jesus. You guys are going to pay worse 
the most, I think. Because you're claiming to be of the church of God and you're nothing of the sort. And he said, therefore, therefore, this is Micaiah speaking, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. One out of four hundred. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Um, and he will send them strong delusion, because they receive not the love of the truth. <laughs> that crosses dispensational lines there, buddy. Okay? And one spake saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. Then there stood up a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? Um, he is the father of lies. Satan is the father of lies. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Okay? This, in the text, gives no evidence, really, that this were Satan himself going to persuade Ahab and whatnot. It gives no evidence. But we can know this, that this spirit that came before the Lord was a lying spirit. So, remember, 2 plus 2 equals 4, not 36, okay? Was this actually Satan? I don't know. I don't think so. Or, or else I believe the Lord would have told us that it was Satan himself. I don't think this was Satan himself, obviously, in the text. You can't find it for me. Even in, uh, what is that, 2 Kings? No, is that 1 Kings 22? First or 2? No, 1 uh, Kings chapter 22. Uh, you're not going to see that it was Satan. But it was someone in league with him, at least. Because he was a lying spirit. Let's read, okay? Verse 21, and he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit. Lying signs and wonders. Two plus two equals four. Okay? I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, hmm, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out, and do even so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets. People will say, well, well, the Lord did it. Said that. Yes, it does say that, genius. But look, you, you look at verse 21. Nothing happens without God say so. Remember, God is in control. Okay? Nothing ain't happening without his say so. Okay? You read Job chapters 1 and 2, people. And that's for those, in context, for those that are his. Even to the lost people. Ain't nothing happening without his say so. Okay? God himself did not put that spirit into them. He allowed it. So hence, he put it there. Get it? It's not a contradiction. Okay? Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil against thee. We, we got to read verse 23. I know I said to verse 22, but we got to read verse 23. The reaction of the false prophet once they've been made known. Make 50 or 100 channels just to leave one comment to be blocked. It's nothing off their backside, of course. But see, that's the pettiness of the false. Then Zedekiah the son of Kinana came near and smote Mechaiah upon the cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Uh, Kinana here, with his horns of iron, he thought he was speaking truth. Now see, Ahab had 400 guys were saying exactly what he wanted to hear. Put that in context for today. And along comes one of the Church of the Living God. For our, this is for our instruction in righteousness if you haven't figured that out, okay? But along comes one. 
preaching something totally different than what they are preaching. The truth. Think of Jeremiah. Okay, he was telling the people, hey, submit to your punishment that's coming to you from the Lord from King Nebuchadnezzar. He was, uh, he was saying submit while well, everyone was saying fight. We today are saying fight. Isn't this interesting? We of the church of the living God are saying fight. But the Christians are saying submit. I've answered the whole thing about uh, you know the uh, Peter about you know better to die as a Christian than a murderer equating it in that thing okay I've already done a video on that brethren we need to associate ourselves as the church of the living God or the church of God and get rid of Christian okay now what happens when someone hears the truth today? We've already looked at 2 Thessalonians. Someone who hears the truth and rejects it. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians, um, what we're looking at is not talking about lost, uh, you know, uh, those of the church of the living God who disobey. No. It's talking about lost people who reject the truth. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 on to verse 3. And you hath he quickened. Who has he, who has he quickened? Made alive. Thank you by the way brother. Thinking about quicken and quick. Thank you. Um, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You're not saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. You're dead in trespasses and sins. Yes, you are. And you're full and alive with your pride because you are serving your father, the devil, Satan. So you're dead in sin, but you're alive in your flesh because you live to your flesh, you stinking devil. You know, you worship your little Baal cookie. Where in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The spirit that worketh, that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You see that? The spirit of this world. That spirit of Antichrist. Okay? Okay? That spirit of Antichrist. Satan. So, verse 2, children of disobedience, that spirit that worketh in them, is what? From the prince of the power of the air. Uh, Satan. So you see, being a child, of, uh, being children of disobedience, is not talking about someone who is saved, and just being stubborn, and being handed over to Satan, for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. That is not what that is talking about. Child of disobedience is someone who is Satan's. And he hears the truth. You reject it. God help you. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. In the lusts of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But see, we came to the Lord on His terms and died to our self righteousness. And the contrition, the sorrow for what we did to Him. And the sorrow for what He did for us, knowing that we did that to Him. And also knowing that He's going to send you to hell unless he saves you. That's going to scare the hell out of you. And friends, when the Lord scares the hell out of you, you will call upon his name. Only a devil, only a devil 
would dispute that. Because your children are disobedience. You hear the truth and reject it, you're a child of disobedience. Because the spirit is in you is the spirit that worketh now that's in the world, the prince of the power of the air, Satan, that antichrist spirit. Okay? Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 under verse. What did you do? Okay. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 under verse 6. Be ye there, addressing the church of the living God. Be ye there followers of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Okay? But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be once named among you as become a saint. Think about these Christians who want to tell you that it's your Christian duty to get the steel of the Jesuit Punyard. And they'll, they'll, they'll quote that verse there, verse 2. It's like we're supposed to walk in love. Okay, read verse 3, you devil. Fornication. Okay? Fornication is relation, sexual relation outside of the marriage bed or before marriage or something like that. Okay? Adultery is you're married and you have relations with someone else. Beg your pardon. But fornication is doing that before you are married. Okay? So, fornication. If you're telling people Jesus would have you to take the steel of the Jesuit poniard, you're committed, committing fornication because no one of the Church of the Living God would tell anyone to do that. And all uncleanness. You get the steel of the Jesuit poniard, you're going to be made unclean. Doesn't mean you can't be saved once you get it because it's not the mark of the beast. But it's going to be really difficult for you. And covetousness. Let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. You're saved, born again of the church of the living God. Guess what? You're a saint. Never mind Catholics and their saints. They're demigods. They're devils. Okay? Okay? And covetousness. Why would you take that, that steel of the Jesuit Punyard? Why? You want to have your donuts and your coffee. You want to walk around. With, uh, 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 right? You want your freedom to be the, to, for things to be the, the way that they were. And when the black pope says, Arturo Sosa, the most deadliest man on earth, when he tells you um, things aren't going back to normal, guess what? They ain't going back to normal. And what normal do you want to return to, people? Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Satan's church, Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuit order, yeah, okay. Nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater. So you're so concerned about your own life that you're willing to end it within a four to five year lifespan. hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Just believe. Oh, <laughs> just believe. Oh, let me use philosophy to explain to you easy believism while not opening the scriptures at all. A. <laughs> okay? Man. You know, you know who you are. You, you do have a very pleasant smile if you had the, the uh, stones to show your face again. Okay? Um, <laughs> but um, you do have a pleasant smile. I believe also the devil has a pleasant smile. Because remember, he's an angel of light. 
Remember, Satan is beautiful. Not what he wants you to believe of this stigmata, black lipstick, horn, whatever. Okay? Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. And children of disobedience have already been defined in Ephesians chapter 2. They're of Satan. Okay? And now, Colossians chapter 3. Okay, we, we have to go through these. Okay? Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 7. Okay? If ye then be risen with Christ, if, okay, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. See, if you're of the church of the living God, you're not going to be seeking, your life is not going to be held to things down here. And see, th these Christians who want you, who tell you it's your Christian duty to get the steel of the Jesuit poniard, if, Ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. You, you're to love your neighbor as yourself. Think about that when these Christians tell people to go ahead and get the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Like my father does. My father. Not my, not my true father, but my, fa my earthen father, my fleshly father. He's one of these who believes that it's your Christian duty to go and get the steel of the Jesuit poignard. Who I also believe is a lost man. Sorry. Verse 2. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. And again, Christians telling you to do that. Where is their affection? On things of the earth. Not on things above. No one No one who is truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. There's, there's, no, there's no way. There's no way that anyone of the church of the living God would be telling you to take the steel of the Jesuit poniard. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. How? How could someone who has the Lord within them even be saying such things? How? And if you're here on YouTube or whatever platform, you're calling yourself a Christian and you're supporting it, you're lost. You're lost. There's no way anyone saved would do such a dastardly thing. There's no way. There's no way. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Verse 3. Why? For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. This is not your home. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. When he come back, it says... Then ye shall then shall ye also appear with him in glory. When our Lord comes back at his second coming, he's coming with us, you know, down with him, okay? Mortify, kill, put down, therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication. Fornication. Sex outside the marriage bed. Before the marriage bed, I should say, excuse me. Okay? Uncleanness. Note the tie in to Ephesians and this. And you're going to note what it's also uh, attributed to. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, loving the things of the world, evil concupiscence, 
got to have got to go back to normal right and covetousness which is idolatry all of those are our, our idolatry and what is the main idol the one that you're looking at in the mirror ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil you will be like the most high for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. And what is the wrath of God? The seven year time period of the time of Jacob's trouble, which we of the church of the living God are not appointed to. We are not appointed to his wrath. God's anger and God's wrath are two totally different things. God can be angry at one of his sons or daughters, one of his children, yes. But not he's not going to subject us to his wrath. God can be angry with someone of the church of the living God to hand them over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved. You love that sin of yours too much. So he's like, okay, this iniquity will not be purged from you until you die. And hands you over. But his wrath, Seven years of, of the time of Jacob's trouble. Read Revelation sometimes. You'll know what I'm talking about. Verse 7. In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. That's what you once were. That's what you, not what you are now. Being born again converted of the church of the living God. And isn't it interesting? One of the greatest tactics of devils and coadjutors is to bring things from the past onto the present. It's healthy and good sometimes to remember from whence you came. But to keep bringing it up? No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. It's 10.30 a.m. my time and a brother is, phone, is calling me. This is why I'm not answering your phone call, brother. I love you. Okay? <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 32. You'll see the video and you'll know it's like, oh, you're talking about... Yeah, that's why I can't answer your phone call right now, brother. Sorry. Okay? Come on. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verses 15. On to verse 42. We're going to do a little reading today. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verses 15 on to verse 42. But Jeshurun. Jeshurun means what? Highly favored. Waxed fat and kicked thou art waxen fat thou art grown thick thou art covered with fatness their heart is as fat as grease fat off of the blessings of just run means well favored and because one is well favored they get fat then he forsook God which made him Becoming self-sufficient. Because you know you're a millionaire. Right? Right? Beware of self-sufficiency. If you're one of these. If you're of the church of the living God. And you are self-sufficient. Be careful. Because the Lord might take a lot of things away from you. Like he did with us. To make us Christ dependent. And the minute you start thinking you're self-sufficient, you got whoa. Let's see, that's what they do. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the capital R rock of his salvation. And who is that rock? I'm not even going to answer that on video. You ought to know the answer to that. 
They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils. Not to God. You know, trying to eat at the table of the Lord and the table of devils. You can't have both. It's either or. No gray. No option C. Okay? To new gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up whom your fathers feared not. New gods. New religions. New whatever. But yet there's nothing new under the sun. Isn't that interesting? Of that capital R rock that beget thee, thou art unmindful and hast forgotten God that formed thee. <laughs> See these stupid atheists. Um, these repugnant atheists who believe in the Darwinian evo uh, evolution religion. Um, I don't care if you, you want to believe that you were a sniveling piece of snot that came out of the the uh, waters and then you were from an ape to right now uh, no uh, God our Father our Lord Jesus Christ created you you're going to have to face him one day give an account for the fact that you believe that your ancestor was an ape you know genius you might think you're pretty brilliant by thinking that we're mammals like those guys on that behavioral panel thing okay the, the four guys to be don't uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they're all Jesuits okay but perfect example these are brilliant men uh, trained well in the ways of flesh okay and um, yeah I wouldn't be surprised they're Jesuits all of them especially the two military guys those guys give me the creeps okay but anyway let's continue and when the Lord saw it he had Abhorred, abhorred them. Extreme hatred. You reject the gospel. God's love is not for you. God's wrath is for you. And you got a Christian coming around telling you, God loves you. Because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are very, a, for they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. Now that doesn't mean that he didn't know what they were going to be. He said, "I will see what their end shall be," meaning I'm going to sit back and I'm going to watch you guys destroy yourself. It's not that he didn't know. No, it's that he's sitting back and letting you have your way, letting you destroy yourself. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Now that right there, verse 21, is a prophecy talking about us, um, the Gentile, being grafted into their tree to make the Jew jealous. Okay? Okay, that's quite plain. This ties in with Romans 11. Like I said, how we were grafted in. A foolish nation. If the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Okay? Okay? We Gentiles, before we were uh, grafted into their tree, before the gospel came onto us, we, we were that foolish nation. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. For a, kindle is, for a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Reference fire. It's the Holocaust, I believe. And the second time he's going to burn with fire, okay? Coming in fire, okay? I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger. Reference to the Holocaust, I believe. And devoured with burning heat. And with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts among them. Like beasts of, at, Ephesus, at Ephesus. With the poison of 
serpents of the dust. Uh, from dust thou art, unto dust thou shalt return. And Satan's dust, the dust that Satan will eat, that's his meat. Dust, and we're dust. The poison of serpents of the dust of man. Because remember, Satan um, values the things of men, not the things that be of God. Sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. The point a poniard, by the way, is like a dagger. Okay? The sword without, the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Uh, what does that say? The young man suckling, the young man, virgin, suckling, man of gray hairs. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. The diaspora, scattering of uh, the Jews on the earth as a punishment, as he did. Okay. And also remember in the book of Acts, where they would have stayed there unless the Lord's like, hey, go, get this stuff out. They would have stayed at Jerusalem unless the Lord sent persecution or allowed, excuse me, persecution to come upon them. They would have stayed hunkered down. But the Lord's like, uh, no, go, get, go, go, okay? Similar to, um, uh, to in Numbers, where uh, the children of Israel, where the Lord's like, okay, there's the, there's the promised land. Go get it. I'm with you. I'm going to give it to you, but trust me that I'm going to do for you what I said. And go get it. Go. Go on. Go, go, go. But they didn't. Okay? Verse 27. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, unless they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this self-explanatory ver uh, verse in and of itself the Lord fears nothing I, I, I do believe I've done a video on this where we center on this very ver verse I can't remember what video that is I can't I can't remember these videos so but I have done a video where we've addressed you know the, is God afraid of something they'll come to here it wasn't that he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No. See, the enemy will start thinking highly of themselves. It's like, I got this like King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay? I got this by my power, by my majesty, for my kingdom. No. If the Lord wouldn't let you do that, you wouldn't have it. That's what, that's, that's what this is talking about. Okay? It's not that God fears anything. Really? Wow. Okay? Really, no. No, what he's talking about is the enemy, the Germans, for example, during the Holocaust, okay, the Jesuits, the Jesuits during the Holocaust, okay, they were thinking that we did this to the Jew? No. The Holocaust of the Jew was a judgment upon his own people. I believe that. I've, 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 I've stated the case and reasons why I believe that. In the three-part video of the Holocaust, um, I'll, I'll uh, see if I yeah, I'll link those in the playlist. And, oh, the, you you Jesuit coadjutors, you really don't like those videos, especially the first one about the over six million Jews that your Jesuit order killed. Yeah, yeah. See another lesson that I learned from my dear dear friend from England. Um, he attacked me saying that I lied about the Holocaust. I should have known then that he was a Jesuit coadjutor, but um, I didn't. I didn't, but now I do. So let's continue. Verse 28. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. And look at America, understanding, being separate than, other than, right? Americans, we rush to sin. Oh, that they were wise. 
that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. Be admonished for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Hold your place here. Let's, let's look at that. Let's look at that. Okay? Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Begin. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Verses 9 and 10. Okay? Sorry about that. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Go back to Deuteronomy, please. Verse 30. How should one chase a thousand, and two put ten thousand to flight, except their capital R, rock, had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? who delivers such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day in the day of the Lord Jesus really got to be careful with that sin of yours brother sister for their rock the Jesuits the coadjutors the easy believism devils okay the Christians and the church buildings okay the Bathlicks the Metha, Methalix, the Lutherix, okay, all of them, okay, their rock, lowercase, is not as our, capital R, rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges, you shall know them by their fruits, okay. The way that you behave, teaching nothing from scripture, okay, with the offensive emails and all that and yeah e even Christians ought to have enough brains to realize that you're not even a Christian but see because their rock is not our rock what does that say even our enemies themselves being judges they let it know they, by by their fruits they're not of the church of the living God see see their genius. Sometimes you just gotta step back and let God be God and let them expose themselves for who they are. And they did that already. For their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons. Satan is that red dragon. Interesting. And the cruel venom of asps. Cruel venom of asps. You know, the wine in the cup and the pucarist. And uh, as I understand it, Cyclone B that they used in the gas chambers for, to kill the Jewish people uh, was a derivative of the poison of the asp, as I understand it. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. Hold your place here. Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24.
Proverbs chapter 24, verses 21 on to verse 22. My son, Proverbs 24, verses 21 on to verse 22. Ah, no, let's 19 on to verse 22. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, one and the same, I already covered this, and meddle not with them that are given to change. For their calamity shall rise suddenly, and, knew, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. All you coadjutors and fakes. Hmm. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there, and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock, in whom they trusted? Yeah, yeah. Where are your Jesuits? Huh? Where are they? When all hell starts breaking loose, where are these people that you trust? You need the rock. Capital R Rock, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Yeah, let the Catholics rise up and protect you. They're the ones who are doing all of this. Yeah, yeah, and you're going to trust them. Yeah. The Jesuits who control all the churches and denominations. Yeah, their rock is not our rock. Wake up, people. See now that I, even I, am he. Unless you believe I am he, ye shall die in your sins. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, said. And there... See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill. See, God's in control of everything. Nothing, nothing going to happen without his say-so or knowing about it, okay? I kill, I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven, reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ, and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword, and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies, and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh. And my sword shall devour flesh. And that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. He is angry at the wicked every day. You know, he's wetting his sword. Okay? If they not turn, if the wicked don't turn from themselves. See, these people. They want that little R rock that's given to them by Satan, who is Satan himself. Okay? Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. <laughs> you know, brethren, uh, uh, before I go to bed, um, not part of my everyday reading, devotional reading, but uh, I'm reading Deuteronomy right now. Um, read Deuteronomy sometime. Deuteronomy 28, verses 45, on to verse 63. Okay? Yes, 45, on to verse 63. 
Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. A world, a nation, a country that has rejected God. This is talking about the Jewish people. Doctrinally, dispensationally, for the Jews. This is our instruction in righteousness, okay? Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. The Jews require a sign. And upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Yeah, and because of that just run, what? Waxed fat? Their heart is as fat as grease? Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron around upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Look at what's happening today. God's judgment is being fulfilled here, right now. We're still on the earth, but when the church of the living God gets redeemed, you guys who are left behind, and you guys who are knowingly going to be left behind deceiving people, oh wow. <laughs> have fun storming the castle. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, <laughs> the Vatican, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Yeah. Catholics have their own terminology, their own rhetoric, their own dialect. They're very good with the trivium. Okay? A nation of fierce countenance. Yeah, Catholics are fierce. I, I know, okay, this is our instruction in righteousness, okay? Which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shew favor to the young. And Jesuits, they don't care who you are. They'll kill you. Okay? <laughs> they'll, they'll kill anybody. Even their, even their own. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy land, until thou be destroyed. That's what they're doing right now today, people. Which also shall not leave thee cor either corn or wine or oil or the increase of thy kind or flocks of thy sheep until he have destroyed thee. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy hand, until thy high and fenced walls come down wherein thou trustest throughout all thy land and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee, in the siege and in the straightness, wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. So that a man that is tender among you, and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother, and toward the wife of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. In famine, in other words, you do not have the liberty to be fussy. You do not have the liberty to be nitpicky when there is a famine. And note here in verse 53 that the Lord said that the children of Israel were going to resort to eating their own children. You know, their own children that they set up as idols unto themselves. Look at people today. They make idols out of their children. They want to live vicariously through their children. Have you ever seen some of these parents at these softball, baseball games? They are nuts! Why? Making idols of their children, anybody? And yet, a judgment against the children of Israel in the siege, when the famine comes, they resorted to cannibalism. Now, you and I, we, we don't want to think like, oh, we're not going to be cannibals. Uh, you get people angry, fearful, and hungry, who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what's going to happen? Okay? Who knows? 
And hold your place here, okay? Hold your place here. Uh, we'll pick up at verse 55. Go to 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. Oh, not 18, Brad. 2 Kings chapter 6. We've already covered these, but again, this is very, you know, time is winding down, brethren. I personally believe that the month of September is when they're really going to start. You know, every single day, they're doing more and more and more and more and more. Look at Australia, okay? But I believe it's when September hits. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 24 and verse 31. And it came to pass after this, that ben king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it, until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver, and the fourth part of a cab of, dung's dung, of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor or, or out of the wine press? He himself is like, Hey, if the Lord doesn't do it, what am I going to do? He at least had, had the presence of mind to be like, Yeah, God's in control, even though this king was against God. Okay? And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today. And he will eat, and we will eat thy, my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son, and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, and I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes and he passed by upon the wall. And the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. Then he said, God do so also more, God do so and more also to me. If the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand upon him, shall stand on him this day. Cannibalism. Cannibalism. Now this was something that was filled upon the children of Israel. But again, you get people terrified, angry, and hungry. And during famine, you don't have the liberty to nitpick. You know, I've run into homeless people who you it's like I haven't eaten in days, and they got a bag of candy. It's like, you look at it, it's like, okay. It's like, okay, come on, I'll buy you a can of beans. You know, bean, can of beans, good protein, good fiber, good minerals, very good, sticks to you. But no, that homeless guy is like, oh, well, I'm not a dog. So, okay, you'd rather eat toxic candy. You can't buy food. Here I'm offering you food can a can of beans but no you're gonna stuff you're gonna stick your nose up and say well, I'm too good even in famine to do no no you gotta be careful with that you gotta be careful with that let's continue okay verse 55 in Deuteronomy 28 so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat. And we just saw an example of that. Because he hath nothing left him in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. So I don't forget links. The tender and delicate woman among you which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. You know, the dainty, dainty lady or dainty woman who is like, oh, I won't touch that. Or, oh, I won't do that. You know, sophisticated. You know, kind of snobbish. 
her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom. In famine, there's no food. The delicate woman, who's so dainty, won't touch these things, but the finest in famine be considering eating the flesh of her own husband. And toward her son and toward her daughter. Again, you get people scared, angry, and hungry. In famine, you're not going to have the liberty to be nitpicky, to be a fussy eater. No, you're not. You're going to eat what you have. Are you going to be so evil affected that you're going to resort to cannibalism yourselves? See? But see, that's a, that, that was a form of judgment. You think you, you, you get a little too high up on yourself about you won't touch these certain things, but in famine, you're going to go cannibal. Verse 57. And toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet, and toward her children which she shall bear. For she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the siege and straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. And we just looked at that in Second Kings chapter 6. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. This has all happened to, we, to this world right now. The religion of the poison crown, okay? It's all happening for judgment because the world has rejected God. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues and of long continuance and sore sickness and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, all the diseases of the world, okay? And they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law. Them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. You know in Chronicles, First Chronicles, verses 15, verses 1 under verse 15, all the names. The children of Israel are as the stars of heaven for multitude, but yet a majority of them are listed in the scriptures. Something to consider. When you're laboring through First Chronicles verses uh, chapter one under verse fifteen, okay, and it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught, and ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. You, rejo you reject the Lord, you're a child of wrath. He's going to rejoice in destroying you because you rejected him. Get a load of that, people. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Oops. John chapter 12, verses 37 on to verse 43. John chapter 12, verses 37 on to verse 43. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And this is echoed in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. Uh, read Isaiah 53 sometime. Okay? It's a really short chapter. Read it. And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? It's been revealed unto the lost world. Pardon me. 
it's, it's been revealed unto the lost world. But not everyone is going to come on his terms. Therefore they could not, they could not believe. Because that Isaiah said again, he hath blinded their eyes. Um, because they received not the love of the truth, therefore God um, sent them strong delusion that they might believe a lie. He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. You know, be a new creature. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogues. For they loved the praises of men more than the praise. Oh, excuse me. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. How can ye believe those who receive honor one from another and receive not the honor that cometh from God only? How can ye believe? There are many out there who believe on him, but they're silent because they're afraid to speak up. They're afraid to go against uh, my brother, our, our best friend, my best friend of the church of the living God. Coined the phrase that these people from um, the church buildings, it's like, don't say anything that's going to upset the tithers. I would do this if I had one subscriber or zero. I would be doing this even if the Lord wouldn't provide for us because this is what he has called me to do. Okay? I would do this regardless the fact that he is providing for us through you, the Church of the Living God, is a blessing. Seek ye first Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added on to you. Oh yeah, you know who, to whom I'm addressing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you fear God? Or do you fear men? Hmm? Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Verses 34 under verse 38. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Oh, you're going to save your life by going ahead and Get the steel of the Jesuit Ponyard so you can go back to your fictitious normal. When the black pope, Arturo Sosa, uh, the head of Catholicism and the Jesuits, said that there's not going to be a return to the old normal, this is the new normal, the uh, Orwellian 1984 reality right here, okay? Okay? You're going to trade that for this? For what shall it be? What shall it profit a man 
if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. A friend of my wife's recently was put in this position. Uh, unfortunately, she is not saved at the Church of the Living God, um, has a Catholic background, but witnessing onto them. You know, witnessing on they're 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 not practicing at all, but you know, witnessing for them. Uh, witnessing onto them. Uh, this woman recently, and lo and behold, was put in the position, take the steel of the Jesuit poniard or you have no job. And we both prayed about it. And praise the Lord, this woman isn't doing it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Now, again, steel of the Jesuit poniard. Okay, uh, uh, hold on. Okay, sorry. The steel of the Jesuit poniard is not the mark of the beast. Okay, I'll link a video. That's why what I wrote down. I'll link a video where we talk about that. In, okay, it's not the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast comes after we, the Church of the Living God, is redeemed, resurrected. What the steel of the Jesuit poniard is is number one. A device created for depopulation. Less people on the earth, more people are uh, easier to, for that man of sin, the son of perdition, to rule. Okay? Uh, number two, it's conditioning you lost people to take the mark of the beast. And once you take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. That's what it is. Kill a bunch of people, train you to take the mark of the beast. That's what it's there for. That's what this is about. Remember, the Jesuit, the end justifies the means. Okay? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. You, you need to um, <laughs> uh, you need to consider the exclusive exclusivity of Jesus Christ the Jesus Christ of the authorized version of the scriptures not the one preached to you from Christians that's that man of sin some tradition Job chapter 2 Job chapter 2. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'll, be, I'll get there. I hope you're there already. Job chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Now remember, there are those out there who are willingly going to kill themselves. And don't want to hear the truth. Okay? But then again, put famine on them. Tyranny. Fear. Famine. Job 2, verses 4 and 5. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath, he will give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. When this gets close to home, you're willing to sacrifice and give up certain things, but your little pet sins, your little pet things that you think you need so badly, What is it profited if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? See, take away your freedom. Take away your money. Take away everything. But don't touch that little thing of mine that is so precious and dear unto me. Your idolatry, yourself. 
And when it comes to your bone and flesh with famine, with famine, angry, fearful, and hungry, or fear or are fearful, angry, and hungry, whatever. Okay. Famine comes around. We're going to see man. Act like the religion of the evolutionists say they are, like animals. You watch. You watch when the Jesuit order instills the little by little famine that they are implementing upon us. You watch. These people are going to prove the evolutionists right in a way because they're going to behave like animals and eat themselves. Would not be surprised if that happened. And Luke chapter 4. Okay? Luke chapter 4. You want this to go away, huh? You want to get back to a, a normal, a normal? Remember, uh, if, if one of you make it this long, um, that video where the black pope says that we can't go back to normal, please link it in the, please, one of you, uh, my dearly, dearly beloved sister, any of you, you know that video where Sosa says we can't go back to normal? Link it in the description box or email it to me and I'll link it. Because for some reason, YouTube doesn't like people putting links, especially on my channel. So, Luke chapter 4. Okay? Luke chapter 4. How much, how important is this life to you? How important is this life to you? Luke chapter 4, verses 5 and 7, on to verse 7. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. See, Satan's temptation here, you idiot, is at the flesh. I'm not talking to you who don't know what this is about. I'm talking to a specific, wonderful person that I know, unfortunately. Okay, who's a Catholic who defends the wafer cookie because flesh is his God. Okay, but Satan's temptation is aimed at the flesh. Okay, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. He's allowed to do that, yes. He'll give you everything. There's a catch, though. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. What is it profit if a man gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So, you people are willing to make a deal with the devil, so to speak, so you can go into places. Mm -hmm. They're killing you, people. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Verses 17 on to verse 21. Brethren, be followers together of me, and walk, and mark them which walk, so as ye have us for an ensample. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Yeah, because the cross of Christ is death. Death to self. Death to the world. And the Jesuits are saying, hey, here's the world. Go ahead and kill yourself to get it. Whose end is destruction. Whose God is their belly. And whose glory is in their shame. Who mind earthly things. God is their belly. Flesh. You're all about the flesh. My dear friend, you're Catholic. 
You've proven it abundantly. Okay? For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, because sin has been relegated to the flesh, you moron! Yes! Yes! Flesh is sinful! Yes! Even the flesh of Jesus Christ, you wicked Catholic, was sinful! <gasps> but yet, Christ committed no sin. But the flesh was still sinful. Because that's what Satan was tempting, you idiot! But you know that. But see, you're banking on other people not knowing that. Okay? Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Not the one that he died with. The one that, you know, the resurrection. Okay? The new body that we will get. Okay? According to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. But see, it says, look at verse 19. Whose God is their belly. Belly. Flesh. You want to see something interesting? A good thing for our instruction and in righteousness? Go to Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25. We're almost done. Genesis chapter 25. If you're a, a copy of the authorized version of the scriptures has an epistle dedicatory, uh, read that. It talks about popish persons. Uh, Genesis chapter 25. Whose God is their belly. And in famine, the woman who is so delicate wouldn't even venture to put her foot on the ground for delicateness. Oh, I won't touch that. Oh, I won't do that. In famine, the Lord said she'll eat her own husband and children. God is their belly. Not being thankful. Complaining. Genesis chapter 25 Verses 24 on to verse 34. Look at this. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red, all over like an hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Red. Okay. And after that came out his bro came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and called his name Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare him. Grabbed his heel to supplant her. Okay? And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau, because he did eat of his venison. God is his belly. That's why he loved Esau. Uh, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. And Esau was the firstborn. But God loved Jacob and hated Esau. Isaac loved Esau above Jacob himself. Because he ate of his venison. But remember, God loved Jacob and hated. Yes, hated Esau. Okay? And Jacob sawed pottage. And Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Okay? You note the, uh, the words red in both of these? Okay? A red garment, a red hairy garment, and red, okay? Red Esau, Edom, okay? And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. This is why God hated Esau. Because he was, Esau was the firstborn. Birthright, everything was supposed to be his. Okay? But Jacob, who grabbed his, grabbed his heel, okay? Sell me your birthright. I'll give you food. You give everything to me. I'll give you food. I'll give you freedom. If you bow down and worship me, all will be thine. 
Remember too about Jacob, there's no way he was even a converted man at this time. Remember that. He had to wrestle with God and get injured. Okay? <laughs> Keep that in mind. But God loved Jacob and hated Esau. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. Because his God is his belly. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. I doubt that. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? What shall a profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? All this will be thine if thou therefore worship me. And Jacob said, Swear it, swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob for a bowl of soup. Now, notice Esau only asked for a thing of red pottage. So he asked, Give me some of that soup, because I'm about to die. I'm so hungry. And all he wanted was a bowl of soup. Jacob's like, sell me your birthright, man. I'll give you. Okay? So he did. Meaning his birthright meant nothing to him. Are you getting the point we're trying to get across? Yeah? Okay? Let's finish this up. Then Jacob gave Esau bread, bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink. Now hold on. Did not Esau just say, give me the give me a pottage. Give me the, the soup. Come on, give that to me. It's all I want. Sure. Some of your birthright. Sold his birthright to him. Okay, here, here, here's a little bread with your soup. Here's something to drink with your soup. What is it going to profit you? Gain the whole world. Lose your own soul. You sell out. Now again, remember, this is our instruction in righteousness. Doesn't mean that you're lost. I mean, it doesn't mean that you are unsavable by our Lord Jesus Christ. God forbid, if you do take the steel of the chisel upon you, okay, you can still be saved. It's not the mark of the beast. Watch the video. I even wrote it down. Watch the video that we talk about. Uh, talk about it. Okay? Okay? Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. That's why God hated Esau. Because he despised his birthright. You know, brethren, people, sometimes the price is way too high and not worth paying. Psalm 7. We're almost done. Psalm 7. Verses 8 under verse 17. Psalm 7, verses 8 on to verse 17. Uh, remember about um, how we said earlier, God is angry at the wicked every day? <laughs> the Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to mine integrity that is in me. O let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. Where are we going, brother? Huh? Come on. Where are we going? Where are we going? I'll give you a hint. It's in Jeremiah. It's in Jeremiah. You know, any idiot who tells you, who looks to defend his satanic devil actions with the God knows my heart, um, you're dealing with the lost devil. Okay? Uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. 
The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Verse 9 again in Psalm 7. O oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just, for the righteous God trieth the hearts and reins. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. Upright in heart. A heart that belongs to the Lord is broken, contrite, and fears Him. Not one that fears the world, Arturo Sosa, loves the flesh, the lust of the eyes and of the flesh. Okay? That's not a heart that belongs to God. A broken, contrite, and fearful heart. That's a heart that belongs unto God. Okay? My defense is of, my defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judgeth the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. Uh-huh. Yeah. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. God is angry at the wicked every day. See, you reject the gospel, you're a child of wrath. Meaning, you're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble and get his wrath. Meaning, you're not saved. You're lost. You're going to die and go to hell. Okay? You need to repent. You need to get right with the Lord. And you got a devil who tells you uh, repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Uh, no, the devils also believe and tremble. But no, you, you want the Jesus of the Christians, don't you? God help you. Verse 13, He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Who has the keys to death? Life and death? Uh, that be our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. I kill, I wound, I heal, I make alive. He hath also prepared for him the in, he hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity, he hath conceived mischief, and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit and digged it, and is fallen into the ditch which he made. A lot of these people who turn out to be fake, um, they've made their own pit. And as I've learned, someone who cannot compose themselves really slip up and give a lot of things away. He made a pit and digged it, and has fallen into the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Again, brethren, again, when our enemies fall and perish, we praise the Lord according to his righteousness. That he is a righteous, just God, fair and equal, and that they ain't no innocent person in hell. Okay? When my dear friend from England finally dies, he's going to hell. Unlike him, who would rejoice if I die, I would I would not. I'm not going to be happy when you die. Because I know you're going to hell. I'm not going to rejoice for that. You've put yourself there because you've heard the truth and reject it. You're serving the Vatican, Jesuit coadjutor that you are, at the least. Okay? But I'm not going to rejoice in that. But what I am going to rejoice in is that our God is just and that his judgment is right. We are to praise the Lord for his righteous judgment. And while I, not, I will not be joyful that you are in hell, I will be joyful and praise the Lord for his righteous judgment. Unlike you, who want to see us all dead. Bludgeon us to death with a baseball bat and run us over twice if you could. Verse 
First Thessalonians chapter 5. Let's end it here. An admonition. You know, we don't got time for these coadjutors. We don't have time for these things. You and I as a church of the living God, we got to do what the Lord will have us to do in whatever capacity He has put us in as long as He will allow us to. We need to be, instead of, see, distractions. That's what devils want to distract you. <laughs> I see you. And hey, hey, I'm not talking about you, my friend from England. Okay, so chill, if that's possible. You know, go ahead and smoke that cigarette of yours uh, a lot more and get drunk again or something like that, you lying devil. But I'm not talking about you. Okay? We don't got time for these things. We don't. You do what the Lord has called you to do. Okay? You stay on that side, I'm going to stay on this side. We'll see each other in heaven. Okay? We'll see each other in heaven. I hope. I really do. You stay over there. I'm going to stay over here. Okay? You got me? You burned a bridge. And it seems that that's something you've done a lot. Love you. Pray for you. Every day. You stay over there. I'm staying over here. You understand? You understand? We're done. We're done. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 1 on to verse 11. Like I said, we don't have time for these things, brethren. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as to veil upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of the light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night while playing on the computer all night smoking cigarettes. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, which covers your heart. And for a helmet, the hope of salvation. We're looking for the blessed hope. Okay? Hold your place here very quick. Go to Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Titus. Oops, Titus, chapter 2. Titus, chapter 2. Titus, chapter 2. Uh, excuse me one second, brethren. Titus, chapter 2. Verses 11 under verse 15. 
For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. The blessed hope is the redemption of the purchased possession, catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's fall. Let's continue in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 9 on to 11 now. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Those are of the church of the living God. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Getting caught up before all the wrath of God comes upon the earth. Who died for us. That whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Brethren, it can get really discouraging out there. Like I said, yesterday my wife and I, we encountered this woman who was so nice, jovial, courteous, friendly, I offer her a gospel track. Shoom. People don't want to hear the truth. It's like, okay. Don't let that alone discourage you. Keep busy as long as the Lord will have you to be busy. And fear not men. And as I was rebuked harshly, Yesterday. Yesterday was a, a glorious day for us here. Um, the Lord provided a miracle, an absolute miracle yesterday. And um, we were able to do some things that we needed to get done. And um, I had a time of doubt. I did. And the Lord, during that doubt of mine, we get home. And the Lord provides a miracle. And the Lord chastened me pretty good. <laughs> really good. Um, so good that we both, my wife and I, receive correction from it. And praise the Lord. Whom the Lord loveth, he rebukes and chastens. Be zealous therefore and repent. Okay? So a lot of repenting happened yesterday. And the Lord almost audibly really getting tired of you Brad when you start this doubting thing don't lose hope continue because brethren like I said I personally believe uh, come September <laughs> uh, Things are going to be really different that quickly. And look at how quick they are uh, um, going right now. And uh, I want to tell you also. I have no ill will against any of those my brothers of the church of the living God. I might not agree with you. I might not like you. You might not like me. And that's fine. We don't have to like each other. We do have to love each other because if you are my brother or sister of the church of the living God, we have the same father. So hence, you are my brother or my sister, I love you. And against those of the church of the living God, I have no problem. Whoever you are. But see, as Paul and Barnabas were in disagreement, one goes that way and the other goes that way. And I think we should leave it at that. Bon voyage. And brethren, if you run into people like that who you believe are saved and just have some really big problems, 
themselves and want to drag you into them as well and accuse you. Um, they're not dealing, it, dealing with it with themselves, want you to be a middleman on something. Um, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he protect those whom you love and yourself. See you in heaven, I hope. It's going to be it for this video, brethren. Uh, tomorrow is my wife and mine's anniversary. Nine years my wife and I have been married. So praise the Lord. We are going to be, uh, tomorrow is going to be a day uh, where my wife and I are going to be praising the Lord that he put us in each other's lives and that we are his and that we are one flesh. So tomorrow there will, um, got emails to go through today. I see a sister um, has a question and a brother asked him of me of a video on dispensationalism. Very good. We'll see what the Lord will do with that, brother. Thank you. And also thank you to those of you who have emailed with encouragement. Thank you for all of those of you who pray for us. Thank you for those of you who pray. Prayer moves mountains. And thank you to all of you who have given to us and helped us. Thank you. The Lord recompense you with fruit. Thank you. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.